Welcome to this video about the strange orbits of Trojan and co-orbital moons. Now normally when we think of a moon it's on an orbit around a planet, it's fairly straightforward, but these Trojan and co-orbital moons take orbits that are slightly a bit more unusual, maybe a bit more chaotic than what we would normally assume. So here's the moon and the earth and the moon just orbits around the earth, fairly straightforward. But there are scenarios where you have these moons that are not just on a direct circular or elliptical orbit around their planet. And this is what the co-orbital or Trojan objects could be Trojan asteroids or Trojan moons. And that's what they are. So the best example really in the solar system is the Trojan asteroids of Jupiter. So Jupiter is at the bottom here on the diagram and the circle denotes its orbit. and on the same orbit as Jupiter, you've got these two large groups of asteroids. You've got one 60 degrees in front and one 60 degrees behind. And there's lots of these asteroids in there. And they are known as the Trojan asteroids of Jupiter. They're also co-orbital moons because they share the same orbit as Jupiter. And they always stay in that sort of location. You've got these rather large groups of them. All the planets have similar ones. Saturn is the only planet that has a true set of Trojan moons where they actually orbit the planet and they're not necessarily co-orbital with the planet. So objects that are in these groups, they're going to actually orbit within their own group, which makes their orbits a little bit more weirder. So they are orbiting around the sun just like Jupiter is, but also within their own group, they're orbiting around the common, the actual centre of that group, which is We'll have a look at in a minute, but they are the L4 and L5 Lagrange points. And objects within these groups will orbit kind of around the center point of that. So as they're going around the sun, they're also kind of orbiting this point. So they end up with these really unusual looking spiral motions if you're looking from some reference point. So the Lagrange points, if you're not familiar with these, there's five locations in the two body system where you can basically place an object and they will happily stay there um, to some degree. It's where the gravitational forces from the two larger objects basically balance, work together with the centrifugal forces of an object at that location. And you can essentially put an object there and it doesn't require any additional energy to orbit it and stay in the same reference point as let's say Jupiter orbits around the sun. Now the first three are not classified as being stable so that what that means is if you've got an object at one of those points L1, 2 or 3, if it moves slightly away from that point then it can, it very quickly moves away, it, it won't necessarily come back again. So they're very unstable in that sense that the, you can't exist exactly on it. So we do put spacecraft there and they require less energy then um, they would require to orbit at any normal orbit. Now what happens here, if you're familiar with your Keplerian laws, is a object located at L1 would normally have a shorter orbital period. It would be orbiting faster than Jupiter would be. And L2 would be the opposite, it would be orbiting slower. But actually objects placed in those locations will orbit with the same orbital period as Jupiter would. So at L1, they need to be slowed down, and at L2, they need to be sped up. And it's the balance of those gravitational forces between the Sun and Jupiter that allow that. And we, we can work out you know, where they are um, by measuring the masses, essentially. Use the masses to work out the ratio of where it would be. But anyway, the ones we're really interested in for these particular moons are the L4 and L5, because they are stable. So these are 60 degrees in front and behind on the orbit of the object in question. So for Jupiter, it's in front and behind by 60 degrees, and they can be extended to be more like tadpole shape, and objects within them can orbit the point. So if they fall away from the L4 or L5 point, they can almost like orbit that imaginary point in space, as opposed to just flying off into space. So they are stable in that sense and they will move around in that general area, which is why Jupiter has a large amount of objects naturally occurring there. The reason being, some objects may end up kind of coming in there naturally and they might get captured. 
So objects that have, have found their way there can stay there fairly stably and Jupiter have basically collected a load of them. But Saturn is the only one that has true Trojan moons in the sense that they orbit the planet, so they orbit Saturn, and they are co-orbital moons with two of the larger moons. So there's actually two sets. You've got Dione and then you've got the other one, um, Thesis. And you've got two moons either side that are essentially the same um, setup as what we have with the Trojan asteroids for Jupiter. So with Dione, you've got uh, one at the L4 and L5. These are obviously smaller moons than the main moon. That's one of the criteria for these Lagrange points is they need to be quite small anyway. So you've got two known there, one at each. And then you have um, the other moon and you've got two others there, so one at the L4 and one at the L5. Now, because the moons are in different orbits as well, one of these systems is going to be closer in than the other one. So you've got these two systems almost superimposed on one another, um, but they still have these Trojan moons um, as you know, the, the Jupiter Trojan asteroids do. But it's just those two for, for each system. Now, other planets have them as well. So Saturn's quite large, Jupiter's quite large, Mars is not very large, and it does have Trojan moons. So it's got one at the L4, which is 1999 UJ7. And then at the L5, there's a collection and about 12 of them are thought to be parts of the larger one, Eureka. So it's possibly one object that's broken up and has then populated the L5, the Grange point. So smaller planets can still have them. Earth actually has one as well. So we have one at the L4, the Grange point, and it's about 300 meter in diameter. And there's an image there, which doesn't show you a great deal. It's obviously quite difficult to see, but the Earth does have a co-orbital moon. And it's not the same as a normal moon that goes around. It's just sharing our orbit and is one of these co-orbitals. Now, if you want to actually find the locations of these, you can by using these, these equations here, really. So you can work out the X and Y position of where the L4 and L5 Lagrange point would be if you're assuming an X, Y dimension. And it just relates to the distance that separates the planet, which is R. And then the mass of the larger objects, so in this case, the sun, which is M1, and M2, the smaller mass, which is the mass of Jupiter. And if you know those, you can work out the X and Y position of each of those points. Um, it just scales with the masses of the two objects and their distances. So you can work them out for any planet if you want and find out where they actually would be. So thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed, then you can check out some of the other videos.